In this video, we're going to talk about another representation of functions, and that's a verbal representation. And so anytime we have a situation given to us, we want to make sure that we um, understand what the input and the output. So we want to identify the input and output variables and assign appropriate letters or appropriate variables to those um, situations, those quantities, the input and output quantities. Uh, next, we want to determine whether that situation is a function or not. And most generally, when it's written as a verbal, uh, representation a lot of times it's just a does it make sense or not and we want to explain our answer and then if this situation is a function we want to make sure we write it in function notation so we're going to look at number one and number four in this particular um, video and so first thing is an item at the grocery store is a function of the cost of the item so the first thing we want to do is identify the input and output variables and I'm going to say my input variable is going to be in yellow and my output variable I'm going to decide is going to be in this blue color and so I look at the an item at the grocery store as a function of the cost of the item so we determine which depends on what and according to the way this the states and the other thing that we want to do is look at the words is a function of is a function of is always going to tell us that the thing after a function of is our input mm -hmm. and anything that is before a function of or is a function of is our output so it's kind of like the idea of depends on so the output depends on the input when you see the words is a function of same thing the output is a function of the input and so in this case we know that the input is going to be the cost of the item and again, I'm using that yellow to indicate input. And the output is an item in the grocery store. It's very, very important that you identify these. It's very nice to use different color highlighters to help you identify those things. And so now I want to write these so that I understand what the input and the output are. So my input is the cost of an item. So I'm going to call that C because I'm going to use an appropriate letter, appropriate variable. So that equals the cost of an item and that's going to be in dollars and then our output is going to be an item and we can represent that as maybe capital letter I okay so now we want to kind of see does this make sense if I know a cost and again if there is one cost can I only purchase one item and if we think about this, that's probably not necessarily true. If I have, and I can always rely on my good old input output table, if I know something, if I have $5 as my cost, well, I could probably buy a pack of soda. But can my $5 buy anything else? Well, I'm sure it can. That $5 can also probably buy, um, perhaps a bushel of avocados and so since we have this idea of one input does not represent or have only one answer for the output then we know that this is not a function and so this is so now we want to describe is this a function or not explain our answer so it's not a function because the cost can buy many different items. And since now in that third bullet, write it in function notation, well, this is not a function, so we are not going to write it in function notation. This time we want to look at number four, and we look for the words is a function of, because we know, again, after a function of is going to be our input, and before a function of is our output in terms of what we're talking about here. And now we want to highlight, so we know that uh, the input is time in the air, and the output is going to be the height of the ball. 
And so we want to write this in terms of and we're using an ordered pair. So our input is the time it is in the air. So let's call that T equals time in, we'll find some sort of units, seconds. And then our output is height. And so H makes sense is height. And since we're talking the top of the building, we could say in floors or in, I'm going to go with in feet. Okay. So now we want to think about does, is there a, for every time, for every second, is there a specific height as this ball is um, being thrown from the top of the building? Well, can there be a height different for the same time? Well, I don't think so. So again, if we had a good old input output, if we had two seconds go by, we probably have, I don't know, somewhere around maybe 200 feet. Now, can two seconds be any other than other thing than 200 feet? No, it can only be 200 feet. And so we know that this is a function. And so we're going to say function because each second has a unique or has only one unique height. And so since this is a function, and we know that this is T and this is H. And remember that always that H is a function of time. Or if you recall, the input variable goes into inside the parentheses and the output variable is always outside the parentheses. So this gives us our function notation representing the fact that this is a function. This situation is a function in which the height is a function of time.